Real scale for your e-commerce brand actually begins when you have an optimized Google Merchant Center, right? In this video, I wanna show you the perfect Google Merchant Center strategy I'm using in 2024 and onwards to scale e-commerce brands to levels like these, where within a 30-day period, we're spending $111,000 and generating back over $600,000, or maybe an e-commerce brand like this, where within a 30-day period, about $40,000 in ad spend for a 7.24x ROAS, yielding back to $80,000 or maybe an e-commerce brand like this where we're also spending around $40,000 to make back a quarter of a million dollars every single month. Now, before actually diving deep into the actual Google Merchant Center strategy we're using across all of these brands, it's first very important to understand what even a good Google Merchant strategy actually means. There's two different parts to this. The first part actually starts within your Shopify backend. Now, if you're using WooCommerce or Magento or whatever else, else and you're not using the SimProcess app, then you should be doing this with whatever software you're using to connect your Merchant Center to your actual storefront. But really for an optimized Google Merchant Center, one thing needs to happen and that is all of the information Google Merchant Center asks for needs to be fully input. Every single product you sell, even if it's in the same exact niche, if it's basically the same thing as one another, needs to have this information in place because Google doesn't really know that your products are the same exact exact as each other because it's a robot. It's not uh -huh. a real human being sitting in Google's headquarters, clicking buttons, trying to find you the perfect audience. So because of that, there's a few things you need to have in order. And this starts again with certain product identifiers, certain product information, which should be added for every single one of your products. Now, the general approach, which we begin with is by coming into the back end to provide three different areas of information. Number one, the Google product category. Number two, the custom attribute section section and then number three the detailed product characteristics section starting with the first section your general approach and your general strategy should be fairly simple it should be to get as closely as possible to your ideal sub niche and to your ideal sub collection so what i mean by this is let's say for example you are currently selling bird cage bird baths what you don't want to do is you don't want to come in and you want to be lukewarm about it what i mean by that is you don't want to choose something that's way too broad and has nothing to do with the product yourself. So if we're trying to target bird cage bird bass, we should not be going and just clicking pet supplies and choosing that as our general approach for the product category. It should always be as close as possible to the actual product you are trying to sell or to your actual niche. So in this case, if we're trying to sell bird cage bird bass, we should be choosing exactly that bird cage bird bass because this section actually acts as our interest targeting section when it comes to Google ads. Keep in mind, unlike Facebook ads, there's no interest targeting with Google. And this section is the first step towards going towards your ideal audience. But that's not all because now we move on to the custom attribute section. You want to be very careful when you're approaching this section you want to be as strategic as possible meaning only providing the necessary information that helps the algorithm really easily find your audience and that can be done by adding the necessary colors for your product if there is one material this cost of goods section is really irrelevant it just helps keep track of your profits but it's not really necessary but size and pattern definitely should be added and one easy way to find out what the size or what the pattern should be is to go into whatever you're selling for example if we're trying to buy certain boots what you want to do is you want to type in the main keyword for your product and go to shopping from shopping you will see on the left hand side a lot of different things coming up like sizing athletic style season material width etc these are all and pieces of information which these brands added within the back end specifically this area right here so if you're not sure for example what the pattern might be then you would want to come in here and you would want to find the necessary information that's closely related to pattern and from here choose one of these specific boxes now what this does is when you add that in the moment you come in here and start choosing a specific category or specific pattern for example then when somebody does that only your brand and some other brands who have done that as well will start to come up. This really helps narrow down the targeting and makes it easy for your audience to find exactly what they're looking for. Very important custom attribute section. Next most important section you want to be approaching is the detailed product characteristics section. Again, you want to keep it very similar to the custom attribute section. Only add the necessary information which you absolutely are aware of and which really relates to your product. So if there is no type of specific age group for your product, then you don't want to add that in if there's no gender if it's unisex you want to make sure you choose that specifically once you have approached these three sections once everything's been 
properly set up in a strategic manner, then the next step begins with the merchant center itself. And this is the second most important part. Now, there's only two things which you should keep in mind when you are optimizing your Google Merchant Center. Number one is to add authority. And number two, the main goal is to add trust. So authority and trust. Authority can be done through a variety of different ways. Some of the most easiest ways, such as having certain symbols or badges on your store, which help your store stand out compared to your competitors. For example, a three day shipping badge coming up. Now, none of these other brands really have that only Zappos does. So if I were a normal customer trying to buy this kind of boot, I would obviously be trusting this product and this brand more simply because of this badge. But second thing that can add a lot of authority and a lot of trust is these reviews. I mean, it's a no brainer at this point in 2024. If you want to be scaling to the next level and if you want to be even competitive to begin with, you need to have reviews, period. Along with that, the third and most commonly missed authority and trust factor that you can do within your Google Merchant Center is this quality store badge. I mean, this is another no brainer kind of thing that you should absolutely have. The moment you get a top party store badge your brand starts to stand out from competitors because as you can see even some of the biggest brands in the world like these ones don't even have that and that's an immediate kind of eye catcher that's going to be a pattern interrupt for so many normal customers and that is going to 100 percent improve your click-through rates but keeping those two things in mind you want to be approaching the google merchant center now within the google merchant center there's a lot of things you could be doing such as the policy pages such as the specific products and making sure there's no diagnostic issues, there's no account issues, so on and so forth. These are all things you must start with to get your merchant center properly optimized. Now, again, it really depends on how many account issues you have, how many feed issues you have, or if you have any disapproved products. And each one of these has its own unique way of get, approaching it, of fixing it. So I'm not going to go too in depth into it. But on a strategic level, you need to start with the product section and then make your way down to the marketing section, to the promotion section, because a properly optimized product feed is one that also has multiple different promotions going on at any given time now this does not have to be anything crazy but you definitely want to have a strategy here where it's something unique than what you would normally see what i mean by this is instead of doing the normal percentage off or amounts off or even free shipping you want to stand outside the crowd you want to go against your competitors and do maybe something like a free gift where they get a free gift with every order or get a free gift card or get something else else and once all of these things are done once you have the products properly optimized your promotion section is on point then of course it's going to the growth section adding things like quality store badge and that kind of covers it for the merchant center strategy side of things now the main reason why we're even doing this while we're starting with the back end sim process app or whatever other app you might be using and then going into the merchant center is because number one we want to lower our cost per acquisitions and we want to lower our cost per link clicks and doing the merchant center the right way actually gets the google ads algorithm on your side it helps prevent a lot of these suspensions disapprovals etc down the line and also it lets the algorithm know that you are serious about selling on google and your brand is here to stay long term and compete with the biggest brands and once google knows that that's when you start winning more auctions for a lower cost and that's when you start getting higher quality traffic i know this because we have been doing this over and over for the past three years now under my google ads agency or marketing which again if you're doing forty thousand dollars or more per month in revenue you need just a little bit of extra help scaling your brand to the next level go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and schedule a free call with me to see how we can essentially work together and make that happen but check out this video right here on a recent case study i did on a brand that we optimized our google merchant center using this exact strategy and then scale them to multi-seven figures.